do that just to get it done. Nothing in there. See the rabbit? He keeps walking right up to my trap, but he doesn't go in. He will. He will. The, tra the bunnies will go into your traps. Pull set. Uh, some. I, 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 there, I have hope for this area right here to set up wolf snares for some reason, but it's not quite boxed in as much as I'd like. But I'd like to do it because I've seen other people what they're doing. So they put their log run set like that, whatever you want to call it, and they'll put it up. And then what they do is they set snares just on the outside for lynx or wolves or whatever. In other words, it, create a bait, it creates a baiting station, natural baiting station. So I might try that. Also for fox. I don't have anything in here, but I'll check it anyway. Wow, that's a lot of wind. Makes you a little nervous in the bush when you hear that. All right, that's coming out of there very soon. No. I'm gonna check to see if there's some fur here today. Now, it, it's a little bit on the mild spell for with the wind, but the wind's cold, so there's nothing there. Getting my beaver blitzkrieg ready. Good idea to always monitor your ice. That's good ice there. Alrighty. Knock knock guys. They're like, who the hell's climbing on climbing on a roof all the time? Must be a handsome trapper guy. This guy. So nothing. Fooey. So, I'm just gonna have another gander at this. But anyway, yeah, if I'm lucky, I'll get a, a varmint cartridge caliber. And, uh, yeah, so I'd like to get a, just, I don't trust it. I'm gonna have to bust like most of this here. My hunch is I got an entrance there, and the other entrance is probably somewhere around on this side. So I don't think there's anything on the back side. If there is, it's right there, most likely, because of the thin spot of the ice there. Make sure you're not Slashing at yourself. I keep my uh, tomahawk fairly sharp, so um, top up uh, your knives, your tomahawks, your axes. You know, I got a nice diamond file set, real cheap one, but boy, is it ever effective. Everybody always uses the core stone, but if you keep, if you go through all the stones and sharpen it properly, every now and then all you have to do is grab the most fine stone and give it a quick honing and uh, your edge lasts a lot longer it's ten you know three swipes and on each side and you've got yourself a you know a fully you know well done edge this stuff here is dangerous on the eyes and uh, it, does, it takes nothing to sharpen it up but if you wait till it gets really really dull then you're you know you're going at it forever and you don't want to do that. Uh, the uh, my obsession with these uh, sticks and poles uh, will be revealed very soon on the channel. Uh, I got a lot of work ahead of me. Getting everything back by foot is uh, definitely a definitely a chore. Uh, there you go. There's what I catch. There we go. So even if I don't get them all done in one day, as long as I get a couple of these home, I'll be happy. Erg. Now you might hear some dragging sounds, and I apologize. Ugh. There you go, that's how you hold it. Grab it there, like that. Oop, now these, it's just getting the balance just right, so you can keep the tail end off the, off the ground. So it's not like, like doing that. Sounds like you're skidding along there. Uh, heavy enough. About the right, th any thicker would be too thick. That last one I looked at was just a little too thick. Any thinner would not do the job. Slowly getting on them, uh, done. But again, it would have been nice to have this stuff done and ready to go for, 
you know October 1st but if I do trap next year I think my strategy is going to change anyway because looking at the fur prices like if the fur prices were really high I'd say trap early but if the fur prices aren't that high I'd say prepare a trap later you know like uh, because you're going to put in the same amount of work you can get twice the beaver but if half the beaver you catch are not worth hardly anything and the beaver market isn't that great in the last past couple of years uh, they got to find a new a new a new uh, considering that beaver pelts built this country up here in canada you know where a beaver skin hat used to be in the you know in amongst three hundred dollars to six hundred dollars back in the 1800s uh even things like uh a monarchal change such as your uh changing of the guards that you have you see them in uh, you know the uk you see them up here in canada uh basically the uh the royal guard so to speak and they used to have bear skin and beaver skin hats uh but because of the uh I guess the maintenance of the beaver skin and stuff like that in a hot summer or whatever wearing those things uh they've moved to, to lighter syn synthetics which killed the beaver market <laughs> well not not solely that but that plus you know a lot of people would rather use lighter materials oh a whole bunch of dogs <laughs> there you go there you go the dogs are not gonna know what i'm uh, what i am <laughs> there's a puppy Puppies. <laughs> Rounding set, he'll be caught there. He's going to be probably pulled out apart. But the idea is that when I put it in, I'm not going to make the hole much bigger than this whole thing so that it freezes over quickly and he doesn't come to the surface. The next thing you could do if you wanted, you could put a weight at the end of the chain so he can't come up. Uh, I won't get that elaborate this year because I don't have the setup for it or the materials uh i don't know what you could use a brick you could use whatever just tie it something that he can't come up right and then uh that's one way and then you could set these in how are we gonna set them in so i'm gonna try it if it works good i'll keep using it uh the reason why i'm gonna use this instead of my older cona bears that are uh, worn out is that these traps still function properly so it's just a matter of getting the the back draw where you want it if you can get everything really flat then uh, then you're good to go uh but the idea is to get the 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 everything tight so that it's not the trap itself isn't moving uh, so it doesn't get knocked up or doesn't get knocked down uh you want a good capture so just stabilize it and then figure out how you're gonna you know how you're gonna go from there uh what i might do is just put a uh maybe two nails or something we'll see what the final variant looks like but i want that trap pretty solid anyway so i'd like to keep it as compact as possible so i could throw like 10 of them into my vehicle put them out on a cold night so that pretty much as soon as you put them out like the ice is starting to freeze over and you want to be well then you know maybe that much sticking out of the ice maybe so he's all the way down there. He's not going to be able to, you don't want him to be able to come up. Uh, this is also going to be jammed down into the mud. You know, heck, if you can, jam it right down to the pan. You know, like uh, just enough, maybe about an inch or two off the bottom. Uh, you're not going to be in very deep water. Maybe I should have made this pole a little bit longer. Uh, maybe probably six feet. But this is just the, the test one. So I, I would probably think going a little bit longer because again you're going to be jamming this right down in the mud and then again your cable is going to come up the back side and then out through the top so you can wire it on on shore or wherever but anyway that's that's the uh, the beaver massacre and monstrosity that i got there it is legal to use in my area check your regulations because uh, it might not be legal uh, i'm going to try a single foothold set uh spring setup maybe that might be easier then i only have to worry about this and maybe i could set it a little bit more solid i'll show you the traps that i do have i don't have that many some of them are functional some of them are not am i doing for time here okay um uh these these ones here are not functional this one will function there there's no doubt about that but this one it's <laughs> a pretty big trap i don't know if i want something that big uh this one will function again kind of big 
so I don't know how many are going to get out there, but uh, I got one, at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know I have about a total of 20 traps, but at least seven. I'd like to get at least 10 of them. And then when I do my beaver blitz creams, you can see my, I'll show you those in another video. Those are the, uh, uh, the Connor bear drowning sets. I just got to fix that last Connor bear. Those Connor bears I'm not going to use because they're not functioning. If I, you know, like I know the, the Connor bears are better than the footholds, but the thing is, is if they're not functioning properly, I'd rather use a foothold that's functioning properly. I'd prefer a Connor bear each time, but you know, I'm going to go with that. Anyway, okay, so I'm going to show you something here getting more refined on my idea this is why i like playing around in indoors not on out on the trap line because out on the trap line you rush but this is the model a right here this is the uh this is the the prototype cumbersome slow functional but this would be a really real pain in the ass to work in the field so then i came up with an even simpler one nice and clean nice and easy this is more like the model t ford and you can see i just got a couple of screws there and i've got to refine it a bit more and get the jaws in the right spot but good and solid once i get it on there anyway try not set it off yeah i got the spring in the wrong spot but anyway you get the idea so i, <laughs> I i'm still in refinement mode but yeah so as such so Model A, Model T, nice upgrade. Nice upgrade. Will be very easy to use in the field. And, oh, I want to show you something. This is important. What I like about this setup is my trap. Okay, it's sitting on there. I'm going to have it so that it's going to be, I might put like a little block or something underneath. The final refinement will be however it's going to be. But what I like about it is I want the jaw about an inch or half inch or so from the post so nothing restricts it but you see the spring here supports the back jaw which also has it supports the trap stiffens it up which is number one number two uh is it also increases speed of the trap because the spring is directly under the back jaw and and when he starts struggling down to the bottom he goes so the trap can swivel i got a swivel on the trap so it won't rip up my animal, so I got my swivel. So that's good. But that's still not good enough because that's pretty pretty uh pretty small for uh, a beaver. So the final refinement so far of what we're gonna use. We're going GT40 here. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I'll have to uh mess around with it to get it right, but and uh there's the concept. I'll probably put some sort of a looping system on the trap so it can be really quickly these are a pain in the ass to reset you usually get, need a block like this to get underneath the spring when you're resetting them so pliers don't work on these guys and uh my not the right size but for now but you can see that's just about right there you know refine it so it stays in place i might use a little bit of wire or whatever like put some loops so things just you know hook on nice and easy and quick uh, anything you don't want to lose like these big rods where I got these why I'm gonna just trap during premium fur time that's it uh, this year was a different you know I needed some bait I needed some stuff like that but I'll have everything set up next year so when it's time to trap all my traps will be ready to go in whatever configuration I want to set them up in and all I have to do is just basically chop the ice put them in start snagging the beavers and whatever Hopefully by that time I have a few more mink boxes made. I was supposed to, I, I did start doing that stuff a couple of years back. I think in Trapping 101 Season 6, I think it was, or Season 5, whichever it was. I started making all the stuff I was going to need, and then I got sidetracked with other work and whatever. Oh, fooey, nothing yet. And uh, I fixed this one up a little bit yesterday, but obviously not very well. So I, I got to do something with that one. Uh, that one didn't work out the way I thought it was going to work out. Um, but, either either way, either way, I've got some bait here. I've got a, a Martin box. There is Martin in this area. I looked for the fur prices of the Martin last night and I couldn't find them. 
for the final uh, sale. I mean, I know I found them before, but I couldn't find them, so I don't know what the average is for a Martin. That's a noisy blue jay. As long as you're not a one of those pesky wild chickens. See, I have my issues with the wild chickens. Now, I'm going to try to get this set up. And if it's going to be mild the next couple of days, it really increases a bait capture because everything will smell it. So, uh, But I would, would have loved to have my, my wolf snares out uh, by now. But however, oh wow, look, I think the beaver dam has opened up again. I got this guy here. Still not sure. I keep thinking I know what I'm going to do with it. But I got to make a decision soon. Because all I want all traps out for January first. Uh, that's just that's just the 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 thing. There's my other trap. Anything in that trap? Nothing in that trap. What do you mean nothing in that trap? Uh, a little baiting tip. Uh, when you pick a bait for a trap set, stick with just that bait if you have it. Uh, don't mix it up, as uh, what I've been always told. Uh, apparently, it kind of gets things a little nervous when you do that. I don't see anything in there. I'm gonna take a closer look at it. It's so dark. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it's daylight, but it's like dark daylight. Well, did that ever melt off the snow? Mind you, it rained a bit last night too. Uh, December 8th, 9th, 10th, whatever it is today. So I'm gonna get this guy up here. And uh, I brought my other gloves because <laughs> I'm gonna have to smear the scent all over the place. I got a couple of chunks of dead otter, so that's gonna be pleasant to work with. And how's this one done? Uh, well, nothing's wet to it yet, so that experiment failed. <laughs> I just baited it, uh, put lure on it just to see if something would come to it. I didn't think anything would, but it was just to get it out for the sake of getting it out. But from this point on, like I can't do any half-ass setups from this point on. They all have to be in in the game, you know what I mean? So ideally, I'd like to have them up a little higher. Uh, but I might only have them there. So I'd like to have them hanging at least six feet off the ground if I could. Higher is better. The reason being is other animals won't be chewing them. So I'm going to come back to that. So yeah, I got to keep my my videos a little on the shorter side. So I can, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, not have to upload so much. Uh, what's going on? Hey, that looks weird. Hang on. No, the bait's right up at the front. I don't like that. All right. So, survey says nothing there. I'll be redoing that trap. Pretty sure nothing there, but I'll be redoing that trap. But again, if anything's going to smell a bait, now someone's going to smell it. But you see, the animals might not be desperate enough to, to to jump into the trap. They, they probably visit it on a regular basis. You'll usually see tracks in front. But this one, I'm gonna, I want to get this one out facing the water. Because the mink traveling there might not ha might not think to come over this way. Uh, even if it's that close. Even if he smells it. He just, it's all, you know, like, they're very... Wherever you see a mink, you could set your watch by them the next day. That's where they go, that's where they go. Now, I've got to be very careful here. Well, so there's not coming up there. I just want to see if that opened up again. See how much that went down? Man, this thing really went down a lot. All that water. All right, good day and welcome. Okay, so I got the box up there. Uh, I've taken my piece of dead smelly otter, which we're going to see in a second, uh, and I rubbed it all from the bottom, right from the base, right up to the top. I will bring other stuff to rub against that later on. Right now, I'm just going to set the trap. And this is just a 110. A, a 110 and a 120, the only difference is a 110 has one jaw set of jaws, a 120 has two set of jaws. And this little guy has no safety on him. So you gotta kinda, you can do these ones by hand probably without too much problem, but I still prefer the safetiness of using these, these things. Now these guys, they're not quite as powerful as the other guys, there's no doubt about that. Uh, you can see I can hold it. The big guys you can't hold. Uh, the magnums you can't hold. Now what I'm going to do... I was going to do something really fancy, but... but so it doesn't spring. I'm still going to use my same philosophy. 
Okay, so my trap is going to be set that way. I got three notches. I'm going to put it on magnum notch. So whatever I catch, I'm going to clunk them good. Uh, maybe I'll put them on the second. Okay, fingers out of the way. And there we go. I can get them on the third one if I can. Okay, yeah, it'll do it. Yeah, about there. So now, what I'm going to do, I know some of you guys, you know, like different angles and stuff like that. So I'm going to do the head cam angle first. Uh, the next time I, I rearrange these guys, um, I will uh, probably, uh, uh, I'll probably uh, get it from an external view. I'm just going to set this here for now. This has to be able to stay. Now the problem I'm going to run into with this guy Okay, uh, hang on. Is where am I gonna hang them from? I want to hang them at least six feet, uh, six feet off the ground, which is not gonna happen from this setup. But uh, and I don't want to hang them off the box, so I will tie tie this in. But I just want to make sure it's gonna stay. 